Yeah, I just think beating Chad with a a 15 year old wagon to his five year old you know sports car because technically the mustang is a sports car um and you know congratulations to chad having a mustang that doesn't have a metal filing cabinet for a rear suspension so good job either way i think this thing would still wipe the pavement with it Challenge accepted. Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to Shifting Lanes. My name's Chad. Behind me, you see my 2015 Ford Mustang GT with the premium and more importantly, performance packages. Today, I'm out here, well, to meet with this guy. Okay. And this car. Didn't see you there. So, Greg, you really think that this 15-year-old wagon can hang with my 5-year-old sports car, pony car, muscle car, whatever you want to call it? Well, I actually don't think it can hang. I think it will hang and will beat it because it's just a better car. Is it? Is it, though? It is, though. Is it, though? It really is. So let's give the people a quick recap. Why do you think this car that came with 300 horsepower, 295 foot-pounds of torque can hang with 435 horsepower and 400 foot-pounds? Well, because it no longer makes that power. So what we've done is we've upgraded a lot. If you don't know this channel, we've basically done a full engine build. Uh, the all-wheel drive is working. Uh, so this is an all-wheel drive car with Haldex system. We have a new turbo, a hybrid turbo. It's a little bit bigger, uh, pushes them a little bit more boost. Uh, we have a full intercooler system. We did uh, a full head uh, refinishing and porting. We did uh, an intake system. It has an RS4 math for bigger airflow and, and just a whole bunch of other goodies, you know, bigger injectors, anything you do to a turbo car that would make it faster. Uh, basically, we've done that to this car and ensured working all wheel drive and it's just, it just flies now, which is awesome. Right. And at the end of the day, what does that mean in power? So this thing is pushing 363 at the wheels and 343 torque at the wheels. Um, now translated to, you know, your, your crank horsepower, whatever calculations you want to do. Horsepower that doesn't matter, but is good for forms. <laughs> the, uh, the dyno operator told me that this thing is likely pushing about 450 horsepower at the crank given their dyno that we dynoed it on four or five times. So looking at 450 horsepower and probably in the range of like 410 uh, foot pounds of torque. Now to put that another way, that's about 15 horsepower more than what I'm making in the Mustang here. But you might think Mustang, sports car, it's gotta be lighter. But here's the crazy thing about this entire challenge and I don't really like admitting this, but <laughs> that wagon weighs give or take 100 pounds as much as this sports car. Yep. So 3,800 pounds, 3,700 pounds, give or take 50 in each direction for each of them. So we're similar on power. Yep. We're similar on weight. Yep. This is a much fairer fight than I really, really wanted. However, and this is the crux of the thing, and this is what I keep telling you <laughs> that you don't want to listen to. There are two things working in my favor that you have to worry about. So number one, you said the all wheel drive is working. Yep. How's that angle gear? Uh, it's there. That's about all I can say. It's, it's, it exists and it has not exploded into a million pieces yet. So I'm gonna, say, into I'm gonna say it's working and it's working well. The, the exploding into a million pieces thing is what, <laughs> what I really wanna get to here because you would think all wheel drive yeah. versus rear wheel drive, all wheel drive would have the advantage on the launch, but it doesn't because you can't hard launch this thing. Oh, well, you can. I can. Not if you wanna keep your angle gear. Uh, I mean, people do it and it's okay, but 
I'm, I'm probably not going to because I enjoy driving it. <laughs> now, to those of you who don't know, and a lot of you are Volvoists, so you probably do know this, but those of you who don't, the angle gear is basically what takes the power from the front and shoves it to the rear. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I mean, but it does it to all over the place because the engine is trans transversely mounted. It basically takes the uh, the power that the engine is making and sort of angles it towards the transmission. So you, it's it's not great. It's not just like engine transmission. It's engine angle gear transmission. The problem with the angle gear in these cars and why he's going to have to soft launch in anything like a quarter mile or anything like that is, well, it's the weak point in these cars. Now, do they make stronger ones? Uh, not actually that I know of. Basically, you're, you're stuck with your OEM angle gear and collar sleeve, and that's pretty much it. So, natural weak point of getting all that horsepower and goodiness. Goodiness? That's a word, right? It is now. <laughs> Hashtag it. Uh, <laughs> so that's a weak point. Now, that comes to a, my second point. If in, say, a quarter mile, mm -hmm. your plan is to soft launch this thing, yes? Yeah. Basically, get it rolling, and then get it into second gear, and go for it. Yeah. First, quick to second, then hammer it. Right. What that tells me is no boost early on. So you're going to have to build ah. to, you're going to have to build to boost while you're you're getting a good glimpse of the rear end of the Mustang. Yes, I will have to build to boost. Boost kicks in probably between 3500 and 4000 rpm. However, the nice thing is about this is it goes to 7200 rpm and the torque curve does not dip. It keeps pulling. So, yeah. while you would think that this car, oh, it's a turbo car, it has a nice mid-range and then it falls off. As soon as you get boost in this thing, it's over. This is Vince Carter, 2000, 2000 dunk contest. It's over. Now, it's over. you would think that, you know, I knew you were gonna say that. I knew you were gonna say once the turbo comes on song. Yeah. One of the benefits to the Coyote, so when you think pony car, you think big, simple V8, right? Right. Well, Coyotes, maybe five liters, might be larger, but this thing makes a lot of its power on the top end. So while you're climbing boost, mm -hmm. I'm still climbing into the rev range on this as it sits, as it's stock. So, this is basically a long-winded way of saying, and I'm sorry you had to listen to Greg for so long, but this is a long-winded way of saying that I'm absolutely gonna out 60 foot you. He can do that all he wants. I'm gonna out 60 foot you, and by the time your boost comes on, I'm already gonna be out there ahead of you winning, you know, just, owning it. Well, well, we'll see because I think there's there's going to be a bunch of different challenges to this and uh, the video that you'll see, I'm not sure when you're going to publish this, but you may see tomorrow or the day after, uh, is actually us doing a roll race in these cars because what we're going to do is uh, on my video, we're actually going to shoot the intro next and basically we're going to say tonight, essentially, we are going to be roll racing these things uh, on a local uh, Mexican highway because, you know, we have to go to Mexico for these things. You can't do it in the U.S. So, I mean, it's got blue sky, sun shining. I mean, this is we're, clearly we're, in we're Mexico. Basically, we're basically in Mexico. But the cool thing is we're going to do a lot of these things. And I mentioned roll racing because we're going to do drag strip. We're going to do roll racing. We're going to do track, autocross. Um, and then understeer. I believe they're, yeah, I know. But once the summer tires on, the, the understeer kind of goes away a little bit, which is nice. And sway bars. 60, 40. Yeah, but it's not as bad as you'd think it is. So. Yeah, I've driven it. But. <laughs> We, uh, we're gonna do a bunch of different challenges that not only is gonna make it, I think, a little bit more even between the two, because they are very close just on paper, that I think that it'll, it'll be interesting to see what's the difference between, you know, an enthusiast's dad wagon with more horsepower or an enthusiast sports coupe with which was designed, existing horsepower. Which was designed to be that way from the factory. This was designed to be kind of a fun wagon. Yeah. This was designed to be a fun sports car now we're all kidding aside these cars are actually very close and it's it's actually a very interest interesting experiment putting yes, these two is. cars against each other most importantly because i don't have to actually spend any money modding the car to put this jabroni in his place that's true i spent a lot of money <laughs> on this thing so this thing compared with this thing is pretty even on price actually so it's, You've spent roughly about 25k on this, right? I've spent roughly about 25k taking out the price of the car. So, uh, but that's including, you know, accidents that happen with cars rolling into each other. Uh, we're we're just, just, just forget that, forget that. What you're going to see is we're going to try to knock these challenges off as the as basically the tracks and everything become available. So, roll race, we can do that at any time. The weather's yeah. actually cooperating in here in New Jersey yeah. for once in the winter. Knock wood because it'll probably snow March 30th. But um, Very true. 
knock that off. Uh, we have a local dragway that we go to that's pretty close to both of us that we're gonna be doing all sorts of drag racing challenges. Another really cool thing is if you punch in the numbers, the power to weight, the math and everything like that, not only are these two cars very even, the C30 is right there as far as estimated ETs. Now yep. I'm not gonna get into, you know, the one tire fire, the launch, the everything like that, yeah. but- Power to in, weight, you're right. In theory, the C30 can hang here too. And then there's, I don't think we talked about Hanson's, Hanson's thing. What thing? do you get? What do you get? A Hyundai? I, I don't know. His so commuter some car? Some sort of Volkswagen. I don't know. I mean, it's a small little turbocharged four cylinder. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna try to we're gonna take you along for the ride. We're gonna be knocking it out. I personally am gonna do a lot of car culture stuff with the Mustang. You know why the Coyote is like one of the best engines currently out there in a long, long time. Um, all that fun stuff. So I hope you guys stay tuned and. Here's the best part. I want you guys to sit here and tell me. Now, I know most of our subs love Volvo. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it, come on. This is an American classic. Like, you, like I said in the intro video, it's like, if you love cars, you love cars, regardless yeah. of badge. And I mean, then... in, in the video where I basically said, you know, why don't we take this and just try to slay the, the Mustang? I mean, I admit, it's a, it's a really nice car. Like, the car itself is very, it's in really good shape. The, like, just Mustangs on the whole, like, I I really like the Mustangs, especially the new, uh, you know, S550 Gen and later, um, the, the GT350 Shelby, the new GT500 that came out. I mean, they're, they're just cool cars. Like, the, the GT350, I continue to maintain, is the biggest mind F car on the planet. Like, you get into it, you're like, yeah, Mustang, gonna be big and powerful. And then you throw it into a turn, and you're like, wow, this is better than a 911 in a lot of ways. So... It's one of those things, and I think this car is a lot of the same way. You know, you expect it to be this big Mustang, and then you realize, well, oh, crap, it can handle. That's, you know, it doesn't have a filing cabinet out back in, Hold on. for he just a said, suspension. Oh, crap, it can handle. So he's already oh, making no, no, excuses. No, 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 no. When We've I'm, been nice when to I'm, each other for too long. When I'm in it, <laughs> it's nice and it can handle. But it won't beat this. Well, Sorry. you guys can tell us, is it, are you part of Team Mustang, which I'm pretty sure is going to be very few of you. Probably I'm pretty sure no. you guys are going to get, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to get hate, but guess what? I'm the heel in this situation. So, you know, here's your hero. And sometimes guys, the, the bad guy just has to win. It's, it's the truth of life. But I want to take this second. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, do it because most of our viewers don't subscribe and you're missing out on some really awesome content, especially as we move closer to spring. You want to find us on social media. It's at Shifting Lanes. I'm at Chen. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm at Chenity 83, I think. Yep, that's yours. Yeah. It's been a long week. <laughs> Isn't it? Tuesday. And anyway, you can find him at the Real Gregson E? Uh, Real Gregson M. I'm good at this. <laughs> Professional YouTuber, yes. And anyway, if you guys want to hit us up there, tell him he's, uh, you know, crazy for challenging the Mustang. Tell me I'm an asshole for challenging the Volvo. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to say, we're open. We love talking to you guys. If you want to support the channel, get yourself some awesome swag. Head on down to the Teespring link below us. Uh, you, we got a lot of awesome stuff there. Mustang stuff coming soon, just as soon as I design it. And... This is going to be a lot of fun. We joke around. We've been friends for, well, too long. Um, but this is going to be decades. awesome. This is going to be really fun. Literally decades. It's, I've known this guy for decades. He had hair when I knew him. <laughs> but as for this one, guys, that's a wrap. Stay tuned till tomorrow. Roll race. It's going to be fun. See ya.